Kuwa Tu gambo sani te Edi nyeri edi singama nyama la laguna Tata te walidi nya Si munseno si mugulu Si wansi wensi Edi singe edi nyalio Te walidi nya Edi nyiza vuna miranga wetu vuna mirama Edi nyalio there is no other name but the name of Jesus. So we call that name into every situation, into every life that is listening. The name that changes, the name that lifts up the lowly, the name that heals. Oh, yeah. 
for there is no other name. No other name but the name of the mighty Jesus. The wonderful God. You who lay down your life that we may be set free. That we may inherit eternity. No other name but the name of Jesus. Thank you for the price that you have paid for my life. Thank you for the price that you have paid that I may be free. That I may worship you with all of my heart. That I may be called a child of God. And you've caused me to inherit that which I have not deserved. Watu nazano usai go Erano tu chusa umoyo Twala e chitiwa We chewa funa We watu Salaba, what to Nasa, what to Nasa, no Musai, yes, no
So this is the day the Lord has made for us. We are indeed glad in it. So for maybe people who are new. Yes, so I'm one of the elders here in the church. My name's the preferred is Samson. Okay, and then the other one, whatever you want to put it in your tribe, what a bull means in your tribe, in your language, <laughs> for us, in our language, they call emong. Emong means a bull. And for me, I have named myself a bull in the kingdom of God. Not a bull elsewhere, but in the kingdom of God. And let it be written in heaven. Because the Bible says, whatever you decree here, it shall be decreed in heaven. I really want to thank the church for uh, giving me an opportunity also to share with you. Maybe before I can uh, start sharing, can I also introduce my wife? Florence is over there. That is my wife, because these days we have to be very, very uh, mean conscious. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are living in, in a terrible era but also a very interesting one and so I want to encourage you that never never be scared actually Uncle Kambia was whispering to me that it seems, it seems these radio stations that had been freely given I mean they are not there I don't know whether some of you have experienced it yesterday we are trying to look for NTV and <laughs> so it seems things have started. Eh? <laughs> things have started. <laughs> so it is a time for us to rejoice before the Lord. The other time, uh, during the course of the week, we were reading, and I think it was this scripture. What, 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 what was it? Matthew? Was it in Matthew? Uh, where he says that, uh, what was it? Was it Matthew 13, 16? Is it Matthew 13, 16? I, I am trying to remember it. Yes, yes. Blessed is a nation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord. And that a people that are of his inheritance and you see, that is scripture has kept me on. That he, me, Samson, I am blessed. And yet, it is not only that. 
Sechu. I am God's inheritance. So for us, even as Uganda, when we have stood to say no to homosexuality, we are blessed. And we are of his inheritance. I want you to walk, I mean, with the, they say swagger. You walk with the swagger. Just saying that I am blessed. <laughs> I am blessed. You know, I'm telling this to, to you because now you are in doubt, you are in worry. But I want to assure you, there is nothing to worry about. If God has declared it, and that is his word, it will remain, the Bible says, the word of God is settled forever. It doesn't change. And if I'm reading the word of God, I must believe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And today I am sharing a message. And I have named it soaring through the status quo. I don't know how to translate it. <laughs> but soaring through the state of affairs. Okay. Yes. <laughs> soaring, you know, it's more than flying. They're just like, uh, I, I, I mean, eh? soaring. Yeah, I don't know how to. <laughs> Soaring through the status quo. You know, I mean, the status quo, if you were to go to the dictionary, it says the state of affairs. The existing situation. How it is, maybe, I mean, how things are manifesting. So, you may think about your social environment. How are things? Your political environment, how are things? The spiritual environment, how are things? Of course, I know, like, for us now, when you talk about, even in as far as the, the nation is concerned, together with us, Everyone is thinking and asking a question, what next? <laughs> because you see, we have been so much depending on someone. Yesterday when I was reading the Bible, I saw it even with maybe Elisha. You no, know, when Elijah left, so what? I mean, what do I do? The Bible says that the man even got his clothes and tore. Crying out, my father, my father. <laughs> we might be crying like that. The Bazungus have left us. The Bazungus have Abazungu left us. <laughs> As we are crying. The status of the affairs. Hello. <laughs> the status of the affairs is, is not easy. But you see, when we look at all these things that are happening, I see God's hand and finger pointing at us. The ones who have believed and accepted him. Because he says, we have become the children of the Most High. So God's finger is pointing at us. And so for this time, I want us to talk about the status of the church. Because if the status of the church will change, then even nations will be affected. Then everything around us will be affected. I want you to understand that the church is so powerful to that extent. And so you should start to value yourself. You should start to value anything you are saying right now. And also when you are saying the word of God, start to value it and create importance in it. Hallelujah. Let's get to the book of Revelations. Uh, Revelations 2. And we want to learn some examples from what God was telling the, 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 the churches. So let's look at what God was telling to these churches in the province of Asia. And of course, this was the time that uh, uh, John was confronted by Jesus Christ in the island of Potemus. 
And this is the time Jesus gave him the revelation. That was given through God. Uh, and the, an angel was sent to uh, John. And so these were the messages that were given to the churches. Yes, go now. Wait, there you can read. Let's read it too. Okay, Kuriabiri. Yes, just verse one. Okay, 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 Eiranga toyinza kugumikiriza babi era wabakema aba abeita abatume songa sibbo era wabalaba gabalimba era olinok olinok gumikiriza era waguma already nyali yange sote wakoa nene nene songa kugwe kubanga waleka okwakala ko kolubereberye kale jukira je wagwi je wagwa wenenye okolenga ebikulwe byolubereberye Botali kula botyo, jija joli era, dija wo etabaza yo, mchifocha yo, bota, botali enenya, romu kaga. Nechino, cholina, kubanga ochawa ebikora, ebiaba nikolaiti, nangi bienchawa. Alinoku tu, awalire omoyocha gambe kanisa. Awangula, dimuwa okulia kumuti, ogobula mu, oguli wakati mulusuku raka tonda. Amen. So thank you so much, Leo, for reading the word. Yeah, so, you see, God is so systematic. When he is communicating, he first begins to tell you what you have done well. And he says, I know your deeds. Your hard work. Your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men. That you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not. And found, and found them false. So he clearly tells you. I want to imagine just right now God talking to, to Kansanga DC. And probably we could identify with some of these things. Maybe God will say, I know how you tolerated my, I mean, I mean you tolerated in the kingdom. How you have tried to really get yourself out of these false doctrines. He says, you have preserved and have endured hardships for my name. And you've not grown weary. Yet I have this, so now he puts now, but yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken my first love. And then he says, What do you do? Remember the height from which you were fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. So this was the situation in Ephesus. And of course, as we talk right now, we also have our situation. As Kansanga, Kansanga. Deliverance Church in general, Deliverance Church, but even the Church of Christ in Uganda in general, maybe in Africa, and even the entire world, each of us has our good parts and our bad parts. And I feel this is the time 
God wants to speak to us. Because I was wondering why he's saying we need to arise. We need to arise. You see, we've had messages. Recently, we were told we need to arise up from darkness. We need to get out from the darkness. And I've been wondering why. But you see, God is speaking to us. Because he does it after he has examined and realized that there is a problem. And so I believe right now God is realizing that there is a problem. No wonder we are no longer having an effect. We are not affecting the world. And yet the churches are growing. I mean, they can be big. But we have not affected. Oh, mommy says we're emphasizing. Let's read the word. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's watch God. Yes. We ought to do that. But there is something that is wrong. You know, right now, when we, 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 we want to explain the way our churches are, our churches, first of all, are confined. We have built them very well. We have attracted people to come in. We have even motivated people with our programs. And we have asked them to support our programs. You know, we are at a level where we want our people to be ours. We are at a level where, by the way, I normally say that deliverance church may be how we are lucky. <laughs> because, because, like, who am I mean to be given also opportunity to, to talk? Other churches, it's the, it's the pastor who talks. He's the one who, who preaches. So he, he, he owns everything. Is he his eye and himself? Others have even recruited their women. The women are, it is them and their women. And this is the situation that we are having. And if God was speaking directly, but of course God speaks, maybe we just don't listen. God would have spoken the things that, 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 that are happening in the church before us. Our churches are full of pretense. There is no love in the church. People are not loving each other. That love of Christ, that the love of Christ, the love of oh, Christ, Christ, where Christ. you are supposed to meet even the needs of your, 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 your fellow brother and sister. It's not there. We are struggling. And God is speaking. And saying, no, we ought to change. We ought to change. We must come out from that. You know, when you read in Matthew 16, 18. Matthew uh, 16, 18. Matthew 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 16, 18. Yes, so, and, uh, okay, so Jesus declares to, uh, to, to Peter, of course, in, yes, front of, in front of other disciples, he says, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will, pre will not prevail against me. Then, verses 19, if you could also read that one. Then, verses 19, so what does that mean in verses uh, 19? So, verses 18 of Matthew 16. It is very clear Jesus is the one who builds the church. Yes, we are But instead, these days we have built the church. And in verses 19, he says, I give you the keys of the kingdom. What does it mean? It he has given us the keys to extend the kingdom. 
But we are supposed to leave with him to build the church. Because the truth is who brings the people to church. Isn't it who saves the people? Isn't it God? So the people at the church is the one who builds the church. But instead we have reversed it. We are the ones building the church. So you see that is where the problem is. Hallelujah. So you see us concentrating in things that we are not supposed to. So we have concentrated in building the church. And we have not extended the kingdom of God. So that is why you find there are good programs, there are these. And of course the thinking is that there is a, that relationship, that, 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 that synonymous. I, I don't know how you want to put it synonymous. But usually when you go, you find a word which is synonymous. The one that really it means the same meaning with that. Eh? So, so, so there is a way we have put uh, the kingdom to be synonymous. The kingdom of God to be synonymous with the church. It is like the direct meaning. And so, we have ended up isolating the church from the world. And of course, this explains why we are infected and why we are failing to influence the world. Because the church has been confined. It is not reaching the world. That is why you find even our preaching, you know, <laughs> our preaching at times. Yes, I want to say yes, I want it is true. But is that enough to explain to someone that the kingdom of God is, I mean, is, I mean the kingdom of God is bigger than that. And there are many benefits that one gets in the kingdom more than only healing and uh, and, and, and salvation. No. Of course, it's true we've only taken more of the salvation. We are talking more of the salvation. But we are not talking more of the kingdom. But you realize when you look at the ministry of Jesus, Jesus had twofold ministries. When you analyze the Bible, one of the ministries that Jesus came on one of it was to redeem mankind through his death and resurrection. Now the second one was to extend the kingdom of God through the earth. And of course the whole picture was brought up by John the Baptist. You see, when John the Baptist came, he said the kingdom that repent repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is near. Repent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we together? So you realize that this second mission of extending the kingdom initially it was given to Adam. Adam. Because God told Adam that you are supposed to fill the earth. You are supposed to subdue the earth. And you are supposed to bring and extend the glory of God into the earth. Because that time Adam was living with God. There was that intimacy. And so he needed Adam to extend the kingdom of God to the entire earth. But of course Adam failed. That is why the Bible tells us that now Jesus came as the second Adam. So he came at the second Adam. You, you, we can read it in 1 Corinthians. So 1545. 1545. Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. So he says, the first man, Adam, became a living being. 
Omuto yasoka Adam yafoko muko mulamu. He became an ordinary person, I mean ordinary man. Yafoko omuto wa bulijjo. Hallelujah. Amen. The last Adam. Adam wolf a a life giving spirit. Nafuko omoyo ogwo bulamu. No wonder Jesus. Ewe munye Yesu is life. Bulamu. That's why we tell people that. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have life. You are actually just breathing as it were, but, but you don't have life. Because the one who gives life is the Lord Jesus Christ. So the last Adam Adam is a living spirit. So that's why you find that when you look at Jesus' ministry, even when he began his ministry, of course, he also began it and saying, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. When you read the Bible, and uh, his desire was really that he extends the kingdom even to the other parts of the earth. But also his desire was that through the church, he yeah. would restore the kingdom of God. And the glory of God to the entire world. That was the main and sole purpose of Jesus. That is why you see that even when Jesus was ministering, this glory of God was being manifested. You find he established uh, righteousness. That wherever he went, he touched lives. Wherever he went, he ministered rightness. Uh, righteousness. Wherever he went, he was a very good example. He was a good example to Emilia. And he showed it. Restoring the glory of God. And bringing the kingdom. So my brothers and sisters. This is what the Lord desires us. The Lord desires us to be affecting our community. The Lord desires us to be an example to our own community. You know at times you get worried and you are like. But is this person really a believer? Because these days, by the way, when you have maybe, okay, let's say a date with someone. <laughs> you call the person, the person doesn't pick the phone. You call again, it doesn't pick the phone. Then your expectation that maybe if he's busy or oh, maybe he must be charging it somewhere. Because those, maybe he will call back. He doesn't call back. Wondering. You're wondering what is what is the issue really? God wants it requires us to be truthful. God requires us to be people of integrity. People who are walking the talk. If I tell you right now, adultery is bad. Then you should see me when I'm not adulterous. That is what the kingdom of God is. About. Jesus said that I, I, I have not come to abolish the law. I have come to fulfill the law. And that's why you find when Jesus was teaching, he was also teaching about the same things. He was teaching about the commandments. You find him teaching about issues of murder. You find him teaching about the issues of repentance. You find him teaching about the issues of, I, I mean, the adultery and all this. He was teaching. Hallelujah. Amen. So that is the requirement Jesus requires us. God requires us. You know, when we even when you want to go further, you realize even Jesus, when he was teaching his disciples how to pray, what did he say? We get it in Matthew 6, 9 to 10. 
Yes, let's read it fast. Uh, let's move it fast. Matayo mukaga. Mwenda ku 10. Kale musabenga bwe muti, tichitafe ali mugulu. Irinyewe tu litukuzibwe. Obaka bakawo buje, byagale bikolebwa munsi, babi kolebwa mugulu. So he told them how to pray. Yabaigirize ngiri yo kusaba. He says our father who has in who art in heaven. Tichitafe ali mugulu. Hallowed be thy name. Let your name be lifted high. Your kingdom come. Your will be done here on earth. As it is in heaven. Meaning. The glory of God. Should be manifested here on earth. Just like it is in heaven. Because all of us who have read the Bible. They they tell us that there is glory. The heavens are glorious. You know the talk of the twenty-four elders. Day and night, angels sing. sing. And so there is that glory. And God expects that glory to be here. On Wherever you are, whether at your place of work, angels will be moving around, dancing. dancing. People will have joy. But you find our workplaces are very miserable. But God wanted us that you may have an effect in that place where you are. And that is the kingdom. The kingdom of God coming down. Where you are transforming lives there. If there is corruption, you choose to refuse corruption. Just like right now in Uganda. There is homosexuality we have chosen to refuse homosexuality. That is the kingdom of God. And that is what pleases God. You know, at times I look at God and say, You are indeed God. We can do all the gymnastics. We can do everything. I mean, we can pretend. We can, can deceive. Deceive. We, we can, can do kulima. everything. And he just is saying, ah, oh, no. no nothing. 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 And you pray, you don't even hear any answer. And you want to ask the Holy Spirit even to speak to you, you don't hear anything. Because my brother, my sister, you are pretending. You are pretending. My God and your God is not a God of pretense. So Jesus prays for the glory of God to fill the earth through the lives of his followers. That is what we see in, 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 in that prayer. And so when you conclude it all, you find that Jesus' ministry was basically of the kingdom of God. Meaning, therefore, our ultimate purpose is for us to take the good news of the kingdom of God to people. That is the purpose in which we were created. I think as a church for us to soar, for us to arise like, 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 like our, our, our theme of the year, for us to arise and shine, the glory of God. We have to manifest the glory of God. And this is the purpose to which we are saved to. Of course, the challenge is that we have, we have drifted from it. We've drifted from the purpose. You know, Jesus, when he left, even when, when he left the apostles, no wonder he told them, remain in the upper room. That you may be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he said, when you receive I mean, when you receive the Holy Spirit, then you will receive power. And then that power will make you take the glory of God to the world. And the book of Acts really gives us this very uh, interesting example. Because when you read it, you find there was a lot of I mean, so many things happened with the apostle. You know where they are saying even someone's shadow was healing. Someone. Oh, hallelujah. 
Someone's shadow. But you know, these things were happening outside there. You find our miracles, mostly of God happened in the church. <laughs> I, I was, I'm reminded of a time I was in, moving in Kampala. Then there was one man who was preaching. I don't know whether some people normally meet him. He has a, a truck with a loudspeaker. Around the center in Kampala there. And so this man was preaching. Then I also came and I stood there for some time. Listening to the man preaching. And all of a sudden, someone who was nearby here, I think he was a tra a trading is whatever. I realized the guy fell off. I said, hey, what is the problem? And I realized the guy was manifesting what? Demons. <laughs> I went and prayed for the guy. I said, you demon, come out in Jesus' name. <laughs> anyway, to cut the story short, the man got delivered. Then later, the other man who was preaching said, So I, I said, hey, these demons can manifest anywhere. But I think the thinking that has been put in our minds is that these demons will only manifest when they are in the church. Which is the wrong, the wrong gospel. That is not the gospel of the kingdom. I want us to change the way we preach. The way we preach the gospel. I am requesting that we change it. Because God is about to do something in Uganda. God is about to revive Uganda. But before God revives Uganda, Uganda, we need to change. We need to get out from that status quo. That's why I am saying we need to sow us through the status quo. I hope you are beginning to understand what I am telling you. We need to change. It is not going to be as usual, church as usual. No. It is going to be the manifestation of God. That is I, 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 I concur with you, Mamino. This is a time you need to intensify to read the word of God. For us at home, actually, we began reading the Bible from Genesis. We began when the children was there, we said, no, this time we need to determine. Now we're on, on, on chapter, yesterday we were reading 20. So every day we read a chapter and share about it. And pray about it. If there is anything that needs binding, we bind that. There are these spirits of, of, of deceiving like, like, like chapter 20 yesterday. We were reading, this is the time Adam was deceiving Abimelech that Sarah was his sister. You remember that? And then now, what happened was that a sickness and other things felt that even the wives and the one who we could not, know, could not now conceive until uh, Abimelech had to release Adam's wife. <laughs> Actually, he didn't release her alone. He had even to take sheep, cows, and what? To cleanse. <laughs> and then Adam eventually uh, had to pray for him. You see that lying spirit? It is not of the kingdom of God. So we need to read the word of God. That is when we shall preach properly. We shall preach the gospel. Otherwise, if you just went there and you know only one scripture, yes, I rock or I want you. So what? Because I'm telling you, you are going to be beaten like the other people we hear in the Bible who were beaten where they say, you, we don't know you. Oh, At least this one we know. And they were given a thorough beating. I am not scaring you. But where we are going to transform anyone's life, people need to hear the gospel of the kingdom. It is not going to be any more business. Hallelujah. 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 We together. We need to get back. Let's read Hebrews 12 of 18. Hebrews 12 of 18. Ubanga. Temuze kulusozi. Oroku watu wako era oraka no muliro. Neri echiziki zechikute zigi zigi. Nechibu yaga. No kufuga. 
kwe kondere ne dobozi lye lye bigambo abali wulira nga bega irira kubanga temuze ku rusozi olokwatibwa ko era olwako no muliro nelye kizikize kikutte zigizigi ne kibuyaga no kuvuga kwe kondere ne dobozi lye lye bigambo abali wulira ne bega irira obuta obuta yongira ko kigambo lwa kubiri so he says we are receiving a gift dufuno bwaka bwaka hebrews 12:18 talks about the kingdom At any way, he proves well. Unless maybe I didn't put it. But what I'm trying to bring out is that the kingdom that we have received is one that is not shaken. Hallelujah. Amen. It is one that is not shaken. So I want us to understand that. That when you become saved, when, we, when, when you become saved because you have believed and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you have been introduced to a kingdom that is not shaken. And so he says, let us have thanksgiving and serve God acceptably with reverence no kwewayo and godly fear no kutya kwa katonda why do we need this godly fear rush to kwa entity ni because we are dealing with a kingdom kubanga tuli kwa kabaka i mean brethren a kingdom has a king obakabaka buyina kabaka but you see this one that we are talking of is a king of kings ndio ndo gatogera kwa kabaka wabakabaka hallelujah amina The person you're dealing with is a king of kings. And so era there is no time to joke. Twa kisira kya kusaga. Kuna mucheso. It is what? This 28 maybe I didn't quote it. So it is 28 29 but verse 12 eh? Okay. I mean or rather chapter 12 yeah. Just it of 18. Sorry. But uh, that is it. So we must be mindful of that. Do you know And what does God say about the kingdom? Okay, let's read Romans 14:17. Just me about Rumi. Kumi na nya kumi na msanvu. Abalumi 14 17 Kubango bwaka 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 tonda sikwe kulya no kunywa wawula obutukirivu na mirembe na sanyu mu moyo mutukuvu The kingdom of God bwaka 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 tonda is not about eating sikulya na kunywa But it is about what na ye obutukirivu righteousness tokirivu peace demirembe joy nesanyo in the holy spirit moyo mutukufu amen amina and so these are the characteristics that signify the kingdom bino yebyoleka obwaka baka it is about righteousness tokirivu it is about peace mirembe it's about joy sanyo in the holy spirit moyo mutukufu in the holy spirit no wonder why that's we say oh moyo mutukubu jangu oh moyo mutukubu jangu in the holy spirit oh moyo mutukubu so the issue is that in songerin these characteristics are not supposed to be manifested by us believers here in the church zina in brazil no kule sibona fa bakiriza wano mukanisa oh that is wrong it is true that you have to manifest 
Because you, 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 you are yearning for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come. But the greater part of it is that these characteristics, these attributes of the kingdom should be manifested in the world. And so our responsibility is to take righteousness to the world. Is to take Create peace in the world. And we have to have a joyous world. Where the Holy Spirit is filling people. You know, when you read through revivals. I have been reading through many revivals. I started reading about revivals in, 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 in the 18th century. Where there was a revivalist called uh, White, Whitefield. George Whitefield. And then I read the ones in the 20th, I mean the, 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 the 20th, 19th century and all that. Even up to the 21st century where we are. I realized one thing. All these people who manifested this revival. It was because they spoke the right message about the kingdom of God. They talked about the right message about the kingdom of God. If you follow them one after the other, there is no time a revival has taken place when people have not embraced the entirety of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. If you are clapping, please clap. If you are clapping, please clap. Because this is the truth of the matter. We are, I'm not going to talk to you that ah, twala, twala, twala. No. The kingdom of God twala. is not about eating and drinking. It is about righteousness. Peace, joy, in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. So that is the truth. I'll give us. So when Jesus talks about us becoming the salt and the light of the earth he means that these God's principles God's values God's lifestyle has to be manifested in the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. So I am interesting you to a time when we need to change the way we do things. We need to change the way we do things. The situation where we are, the state of affairs where we are needs to change. Such that we begin doing things in a different way. You know, you can even begin to preach people by loving them. Just You just love them. If it's a Muslim, just love that Muslim. But you see, where we have been brought is that you begin to hate a Muslim. Why? Did Jesus hate drunkards? Yes, Did he didn't go to them. He went to them. Why do we hate these people? You find a drunkard and you are just saying, ah, this one is going to hell. Sometime if no Who told you? you? Suppose a the man gamba. repented there and then wouldn't you? Why do we judge? We need to reach a different now. If we are to begin to, to minister to people, let's do it different. We will see the church getting filled. But we will also see the community being transformed. We are reaching out We are doing things in a different way. We need to come back and pray. We need to ask God. Because a revival needs to take place in Uganda. And it's going to begin in Uganda. We've been hearing of a revival. Yes, we had the East African revival. But that is not enough. Africa. We need a revival here. Because we have opened God's eyes like this. God's eyes have been opened for you. you don't see. But if you are looking into the spirit, God's eyes are open. Like just waiting for us to prepare ourselves to receive. Let's stand up.
Tuimuke tusabe. Tuimuke tusabe. You've been listening to the word. What do we say chigambo? And uh, we need to pray. I, I don't know whether they are probably before we pray. And there, and, uh, is there anyone who says I want to get saved today? Wa gama njikala kuloko kale ero. I want to get saved such that I will begin to manifest this kingdom value. I don't want the status where I am. I want to move away from that status. Are you there? Jolly. Maybe you're saying I want to get saved today. The Bible says when the word of God comes to you, God God in your heart. Because the way we come to God, we come the way we are. And then it's the one to change us. It's the one to transform us. So let's begin praying. People are struggling with many things. Yet, this thing is coming. It's not to limit it. I want you to just believe. Just believe God. Father in heaven. In the name of Jesus. We stand before you. First of all, accepting that we are not right. What we have done is not right before you. The reason why we ask that you forgive us. I stand to ask for my brethren that you forgive us. Forgive our sinfulness. Forgive our wretchedness. Our wickedness. Forgive us. But here we are, oh God, bringing our problems to you because we are defeated. We are defeated, Lord. We don't know what to do. We are like Jehoshaphat. He said, I don't know what to do. So, Lord, we are before you. Here, my brethren, oh God, before you, Lord, there are those who need to be dealt with, I mean, issues to be dealt with. There are those who have issues to be dealt with. There are those who are sick. There are those who are lacking. There are those who are having different issues. We are to your people. Touch your people. Meet them at a point of peace. Establish yourself in them. There are those who just desire to seek you more. We live in an environment that they may seek. We live in an environment that they may seek. There are those who need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. May you fill them with the Holy Spirit. May you minister to them. Let them be filled with the Holy Spirit. Minister to your people. Touch them, O King of Glory. Touch them, Lord. Yes, Lord. Rule and reign over them. Rule and reign over them. Rule and reign over them. Yes, O God. We declare you as their God. And then they will embrace you. Oh, Rabbi Yamamama. Those who are lucky. That you those who are worried that you may remove fear from them. Touch them, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Touch them, Lord.